in this video we will talk about the myasthenia gravis the term myasthenia gravis is a latin term which means grave muscle weakness this is the characteristic feature of the myasthenia gravis it is an autoimmune disorder which affects the myoneural or the neuromuscular junction and is characterized by varying degrees of weakness of the voluntary muscles the myoneural junction is the chemical connection between the muscle and plate and the nerve terminal where the chemical communication takes place between the nerve and the muscle myasthenia gravis affects more women than men the cause include the autoantibodies directed at acetylcholine receptors in most of the cases thymus gland is believed to be the site of production of these autoantibodies in rare cases the children born to a mother with myasthenia gravis may also have the myasthenia gravis disease now what is the difference between normal muscle contraction and the myasthenia gravis normally when the action potential travels through the axon it reaches the nerve terminal and causes the release of acetylcholine from the vesicles into the neuromuscular junction the acetylcholine binds to the acetylcholine receptors on the muscle and plate and cause the contraction of the muscle but in myasthenia gravis the autoantibody is directed at the acetylcholine receptors bind to the acetylcholine receptors and make them unavailable to bind with the acetylcholine this results in the weakness of the muscle contraction and manifests as generalized muscle weakness pathophysiology due to autoimmune response the autoantibodies which are directed at the acetylcholine receptor sites bind to the acetylcholine receptors and impair the transmission of impulses at the myoneural junction due to absence of receptors or less number of receptors available for the stimulation or binding to the acetylcholine this finally leads to weakness of the voluntary muscles the clinical manifestations in most of the cases start with the ocular muscles resulting in diplopia or double vision and ptosis or drooping eyelid the laryngeal muscle involvement may result in dysphonia which is voice impairment and dysphagia which is difficulty swallowing this increases the chances of choking and aspiration the involvement of the respiratory muscles may result in respiratory failure and the patient also experiences generalized weakness of the arms legs and neck now how can we diagnose myasthenia gravis the first test is the acetylcholine stress inhibitor test what happens when the acetylcholine is released into the neuromuscular junction and finishes its job it is stored back into the vesicles in the nerve terminal and some of acetylcholine undergoes breakdown by the cholinesterase enzyme in anticholinesterase inhibitor test the adrophonium chloride which is administered intravenously inhibits the cholinesterase and prevents the breakdown of the acetylcholine which increases the concentration of the acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction and results in temporary resolution of the muscle weakness 30 seconds after the iv administration of the adrophonium chloride the facial muscle weakness and the ptosis should resolve for about 5 minutes the next is the eyes test the ice pack is placed over the patient's eye for 1 minute and the ptosis should resolve temporarily the mechanism is the same that the cold prevents the breakdown of the acetylcholine by the cholinesterase enzyme the next is the repetitive nerve stimulation which demonstrates a decrease in the successive action potentials in case of myasthenia gravis stimulation of the motor neuron causes it to release acetylcholine which binds to the acetylcholine receptors causing muscle contraction due to repeated nerve stimulation acetylcholine stored in the nerve terminal is gradually depleted leading to successive weakening of the muscle contraction however in normal muscle the threshold is still crossed and the muscle contraction still occurs in myasthenia gravis initially the threshold may be crossed resulting in muscle contraction but during successive stimulations the threshold is not reached and the muscle fiber fails to contract the next is the mri of the thymus gland which may demonstrate an enlarged thymus gland in case the thymus is the site of production of autoantibodies the next is the blood tests which detect the autoantibodies in the blood and confirm the diagnosis the first treatment modality is the pharmacologic therapy the first drug of choice is the pyridostic mean bromide this is an anticholinesterase medication which prevents the breakdown of acetylcholine and this increases the concentration of the acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction improving the muscle contraction the second is the prednisone which is immunomodulating agent this suppresses the antibody production the next is intravenous immune globulin which destroys and neutralizes the antibodies the next treatment modality is the therapeutic plasma exchange in this blood is filtered and the antibodies attacking the acetylcholine receptors are removed the next is the surgery involving the removal of the thymus gland called the thymectomy this is the only treatment modality that results in complete remission in almost about 35% of the cases 
The complications of the myasthenia gravis include myasthenic crisis. This is the exacerbation of the disease process characterized by severe generalized muscle weakness and weakness of the respiratory uh, muscles which can result in respiratory failure and the patient may need to be put on mechanical ventilation. The nursing management includes teaching the patient about actions of medications and the importance of taking them on time, informing the patient to track the fluctuations in symptoms throughout the day and inform the physician about the same so that the medication dosage and the timing can be adjusted accordingly to get the highest benefit from the medications. Patient is educated to adopt strategies to conserve energy like scheduling the activities and the rest. Also the patient is encouraged to rest before the meals to reduce the muscle fatigue. To prevent the corneal damage due to tosses, the patient is advised to use the artificial tears. The factors that exacerbate the weakness and can cause myasthenic crisis are identified and avoided. Finally, we need to administer the medications that the physician has ordered. Thank you. That was all about myasthenia gravis.